Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Keep your attention right there. And then keep it there again and again and again. The mind is used to wandering around as it likes. But you have to give it some discipline. You have to show some control. Because after all, how many things in life can you control? You can't control the weather. You can't control the economy. Things on which we really depend. You have no control over them at all. So exert some control in areas where you should be in control, in control of your own mind. Because your mind is what shapes your experience, shapes your life. And if it's out of control, what do you have? It's like giving a dangerous toy to a child. The child doesn't know how to control the toy. It can harm itself. It's the same with the mind. We can end up doing and saying and thinking lots of things that will destroy ourselves without knowing what we're doing. So we have the Buddha to teach us what is skillful and what is not skillful in the long run. But then it's up to us to exert some control over our actions. Someone once asked a monk, what is the result of action? And he said, well, all actions result in pain, thinking that all the things that we experience in life are in constant stress on that self. When the Buddha heard that, he said, no, you can't speak it that way. When you're talking about action, we're talking about skillful actions, unskillful actions, because there is such a thing as long-term happiness, and it can be attained through our actions. There's such a thing as long-term pain that can be attained through our actions. Which do you want? We have the choice. So you want to control your mind in the direction that goes for the long-term happiness. So if you notice the mind slipping off, just bring it right back. Slips off again, bring it right back again. Be persistent, because your long-term happiness is at stake. When you can exert some control here, then you're truly safe. The self becomes its own mainstay, atta hiyata no nato. And it does that by developing the qualities inside that it can trust. Qualities like the Buddha's qualities. Wisdom, compassion, discernment. These are things we can develop inside, following the Buddha's example. And when we follow his example, that's how we take him as a refuge. The same with the Dharma, the same with the Sangha. It's not that they're going to come and help us, but they do give us advice. And it's our actions that actually help us to make sure that we go in the right direction. So make sure your actions are consistently good, because after all, we want a goodness, we want a happiness that is consistent. So you have to make the causes consistent as well. And you do that by training the mind to be more consistent. Tell it to stay with one thing, and it stays. And of course, you don't just use force with it. We work with the breath. We try to make the breath comfortable so the mind is happy to stay here, interested in staying here. Because that's a lot of the trick to training the mind. You have to take an interest in doing this. When you find it's interesting to overcome your greed, overcome your aversion, overcome your delusion. When you find it interesting to see how you can say no to the mind when it wants to say something that it knows it shouldn't be saying. If you can find that interesting, that's half the battle. Because the mind goes with what it's interested in. So make it interested in the fact that it can be trained. You're turning it into a new mind. A mind that can rely on itself. It's then that you're truly safe.